I won't even be a footnote. Is that why you took the job for the credit? Welcome to Ms. Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 things The Dig got factually right and wrong. You told me you were a difficult man. <laughs> Did he know? <laughs> Unorthodox and untrained. You might understand you only asked for me because of my size. I got a lucky guess, actually. It's someone's grave. No, as life was revealed. For this list, we'll be unearthing the true story behind the new movie streaming on Netflix. Have you seen The Dig? Give us your thoughts about it in the comment section. Number 10. The Sutton Who Dig Right. Any kid who has ever seen an adventure movie has dreamed about finding buried treasure in the backyard. But if you're Robert Pretty, dreams really can come true. Oh, I'm an excavator. You've come to dig up the mounds. As we see in the movie, his mother Edith Pretty hired Basil Brown to excavate the burial mounds that dotted her Suffolk property. The result was a life-changing discovery. Congratulations, this <laughs> Well, you thought there was something in you. I had my feeling. <laughs> that you did, Mrs. Pretty. The archaeologists who worked on the site discovered weapons, armor, tools, and more. Did we mention they found all of this in a preserved Anglo-Saxon ship? More than just being wildly cool for its own sake, the Sutton Who Dig proved to be a highly significant discovery for the continued understanding of Anglo-Saxon civilization. This changes everything. These people were not just marauding barterers. They had culture. They had art. They had money. So what's in your backyard? Number 9. The Time Frame. Wrong. Given the scope of the findings and the scale of the archaeological magnitude, it's really impressive that this whole dig went down in a single summer. So little time before world events confound us. It's a race. An absolute race. That's because it didn't. The movie compresses events for the sake of the narrative, but excavation is usually a much lengthier process. The movie jumps us right into the summer of 1939, which was the last phase of its historical counterpart. See this line here? Ground is higher, but the soil is darker. So you think there's something beneath? Well, we may know by the end of today. The real story began two years earlier when Edith Pretty first started exploring the idea of having the mounds excavated. The Ipswich Museum put her in touch with Basil Brown, who started work in June of 1938. Things like this are usually done through museums. Yes, but when I approached Ipswich, Mr. Reed Moore said that with the war coming, they couldn't embark upon any new ventures. It wasn't until he returned to the site the following summer that he would make the biggest discoveries, though. Number 8. The Plane Crash Wrong A striking moment in the dig occurs when a warplane crashes in the river near the dig site. As Edith and Peggy watch, the archaeologists rush to help only to have to recover the pilot's lifeless body. This tragic incident is a very poignant reminder about the threats of the real world looming larger over the excavation project and fits within the movie's larger themes about mortality and permanence. Life is very fleeting. I've learned that. It has moments you should seize. It is not, however, a part of any real story relating to the dig. The incident may be loosely based on a plane that crashed in the nearby Deben River during the late days of World War II, but the event we see on screen is purely artistic license. Number 7. Basil Brown's Amateur Status Right. Much is made in the dig of the fact that Basil Brown is not considered a professional archaeologist. He told me you were a difficult man. Did he know? <laughs> Unorthodox. And untrained. <laughs> so that's his reference, is it? This is true, but it only makes Brown himself a much more impressive figure. Brown started exploring Roman remains in Suffolk as a hobby and eventually uncovered a number of ancient roads and medieval buildings, in addition to locating the sites of ancient settlements. I do it because I'm good at it. Because that's what my father taught me and what his father taught him. His success earned him part-time contract work with the Ipswich Museum, putting him on the path to Edith Pretty's property, where he would go on to make history. All without any formal training. 
tell that story to the next person who makes fun of your nerdy hobby. I left school when I was 12. We always had a hunger to study. Number 6. Sparks Between Edith and Basil Wrong. One thing we're grateful for is the fact that the dig never turns into an excuse for a cliched love story. Mrs. Pretty has released you. I have said it is your choice. Well, then I'll stay. Thank you kindly, ma'am. But this is still a movie, and there's only so much restraint we can expect. The sparks between Edith and Basil are very subtle, but they're still present, especially on Edith's side. Mr. Brown sends his apologies, ma'am. That's all. Thank you, Ellen. Even that is a little much for us. While the real-life Basil and Edith had a positive platonic relationship, there is no evidence that either felt anything more than professional appreciation for the other person. The greatest and most beautiful treasure of all. Ninety feet long, lying east to west, found and excavated by Mr. Basil Brown. Mr. Basil! Mr. Brown! Frankly, we don't think this movie needs any more than that between them. The world needs more examples of men and women who can like and respect one another without getting romantic. Number 5. Edith Pretty – Wrong Come to think of it, there's a lot about Edith Pretty that the movie depicts incorrectly. Very little of her personality seemed to survive adaptation, apart from her interest in archaeology. My interest in archaeology began like yours when I was scarcely old enough to hold a trowel. My childhood home was built on a Cistercian convent. I helped my father excavate the apps. The real Edith was the kind of spirited nonconformist that we always want more of. She was worldly and educated, worked for the Red Cross, saved marriage for later in life, and even served as a local magistrate. Where are we heading? Orion's belt to take the queen home. Which queen? This boat's hers. Unfortunately, on-screen Edith seems more defined by loneliness and ill health than by her dynamic historical namesake. She was also 56 in 1939, 21 years older than actress Carrie Mulligan. Mulligan's great, but with good parts for mature actresses so rare, we can't think of a good excuse to age Edith down. He say, time lost its meaning. Number 4. Rory Lomax – Wrong Most of the characters we meet in The Dig are based however loosely, on real-life participants in the Sutton Hoo excavation. Johnny Flynn's Rory Lomax is the lone exception. Where in God's land did you come from? I rode, actually, on my motorbike from Ipswich. His character appears as Edith's photographer cousin, who is brought in to lend a hand on the dig. I thought I might take some photographs, could make a useful record. Would you mind? Not at all. Well, that's the narrative justification anyway. Rory really exists for an illicit love story with just slightly more heat than Edith's implied crush on Basil. When he leaves to serve with the RAF late in the film, he also ties the events of the plot into the bigger framework of World War II. Rory becomes the human face of the sacrifices of war in a way that the anonymous crash pilot couldn't. I'm saying this most seriously, don't you dare put yourself in danger. Well, not sure I shall have much choice. <laughs> Number 3. Peggy Piggott – Wrong Peggy Piggott is another one who isn't done much justice by her reinvention for the dig. When we meet Peggy in the movie, her husband has interrupted their holiday to join the Sutton Hoo excavation, and Peggy herself is only an amateur whose initial contribution to the project is a lightweight one. Am I to understand you only asked for me because of my size? A lucky guess, actually. Yeah, <laughs> thank God. Piggy didn't marry a piglet. Her main plot in the movie involves her growing attraction to Rory Lomax. I thought it might bring me luck. And has it? Meanwhile, the real Peggy was a Cambridge-educated professional archaeologist with considerable field experience to her name. She had even directed her first dig at the age of only 25. You clever girl. Look at this. Look. Peggy would go on to a long and respected career in archaeology. And though she did eventually divorce Stuart Piggott, it was years after Sutton Hoo. Number 2. Conflict with Charles Phillips 
right and wrong. When Charles Phillips shows up in the movie, he is meant to be the face of the stuffy, elitist academic gatekeepers, and he and Brown are instantly at odds. As this is a find of national interest, the British Museum will be taking charge. Your work looks, thankfully, decent, but your excavating service is no longer required. That's not necessarily accurate to Phillips as a person, but there are seeds of truth in the events surrounding his character. When Phillips was given control of the dig, Basil Brown was relegated to an assistant because of his lack of formal credentials. Stuart couldn't fault his work. Could he not be unearthing the stern? Mr. Brown isn't qualified. No, well, that's just snobbery. And despite his extensive contributions, Basil Brown's name was initially left off the credit for the discovery. It won't even be a footnote. Is that why you took the job for the credit? However, it wouldn't be fair to call the relationship between the two men antagonistic. All evidence suggests they both held mutual respect for each other. But we suppose that's not as watchable. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. The Burial of Basil Brown Wrong. Oh, you might be down there, Mrs. Pree. I don't save. The most dramatic event of the dig is the sudden collapse of one of the mounds. We can't dig down into the earth without considering the earth. Basil is buried, only to be dug out by a panicked Edith and her staff. Carrie Mulligan has described that scene as the most terrifying of her career, as it was her responsibility to clear the dirt from Ray Fiennes' face. While we feel the tension very acutely while watching the movie, it must be noted for the sake of accuracy that this is yet another invention of the fictional retelling. Real-life accounts of the dig do not record any collapse during the excavation. We can't deny that it makes for an arresting visual, though, especially given the themes of the movie. It's someone's grave. No, as life was revealed. Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo. And be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.